you put this in your food and people are like, oh my God, what is, what is that? Oh my God. That's the softness you're looking for in a pear. No. So where do you get the, the food? Come right the here. Yes! Oh my God! We are in the Bravo Supermarket in Sanford, Orlando. It's your boy, as always, award-winning celebrity chef, Chef Javon. We're here with Mackenzie. This is one of my mentees. I have a mentor program, and the package that she has, she gets to go out shopping with me, and she gets to go out on events with me, and shadow, and learn how to do things. But that, we ain't gonna talk about that. We're just gonna talk about shopping today, what to pick, how do you pick your fruits, reading ingredients, just knowing and how to take care of vegetables and herbs, and, and picking your meats, your chicken, your steaks, and your, your fruits, and your this, and your that. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, just stay tuned to the video. <laughs> Shout out to Bravo Supermarket. We out of here. <laughs> yes. Uh, so listen, a lot of people don't know about time. Do you have time? Yes. We have time today, right? Yes. Okay. So look at the differences, right? Come closer to this. I want you to see the difference between this pack of time and this pack of time. Which pack of time would you choose? I would choose this one. This one? Yes. I would choose this one. Oh, what? Because this one's darker, it's more fresh, greener. How is it gonna look on the food? Time, you take each sprig, it's called a sprig, shred it down the um, edges, use the stem as well, because it has flavor in it. Put it with your steak, you put it with your proteins, lots of proteins, chicken, if you wanna bake a chicken, roast a chicken, uh, a steak when you're gonna braise it on the stove, you know? It's great earthly flavor. I put this in my grits. Check out the recipe. <laughs> Check out the recipe. But yes, I would pick out this one faster than I would pick out this one. If you notice, this one is starting to wilt. See the color is lighter, it's starting to wilt. So would you say um, the dark one has more flavor? Than Absolutely, the it's more rich, it's more potent. Look at the asparagus. Now, a lot of people don't know how to cook asparagus. We're definitely gonna do a video on that coming up soon. But these are pencil asparagus. Pencil asparagus is because they look like pencils, the same size. They're so skinny, they cook so fast. And a lot of people um, buy asparagus, they don't know how to cook it, and it's overcooked, and like they're not reaping the benefits of eating asparagus. So definitely like asparagus like this, you don't want to put it in the oven. You don't want to put them on the stove and overcook them. You don't want to put them on the grill. What I love about Bravo is they freshly puree their garlic. If you don't want to have the time to do it, you want to take the time and do it yourself, Bravo got it right here. I love it. Freshly puree, that's their brand. All right, so one other thing I wanted to talk to you about, especially when it comes to diverse herbs, is this wonderful herb called culantro. Do you, can you smell it? Yes. Smell this, smell it. Oh, I can smell it right here, oh my God. So, it's so powerful. It's, it's so powerful. It's, it's, it's the cousin to cilantro, but it's more powerful. Some people from the islands call this bandanian. Trinity's call it bandanian. I've seen the other stores where it's, it says cousin to cilantro. You put this in your food and people are like, oh my God, what is, what is that? Oh my God. Even for soup, because uh, yes. there's our independence um, soup that mm -hmm. we do in January. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like we always put um, cilantro in that soup. Oh, yeah. I know it has to be powerful. Yeah. So it, powerful. It tastes really good. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. I can't wait to get some. All right, so let's move on to another section. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about this gorgeous jackfruit. And I must say, bravo to bravo. A lot of grocery stores, you won't see this particular fruit. This is an exotic fruit, jackfruit. Um, it's very meaty, and a lot of vegans like to use this as a substitute for meat. I've used this to make chili. I've used it to make pulled chicken. Um, barbecue pulled chicken, barbecue pulled pork, but it's meatless. And so what they do is, this is what it looks like, but it's huge, almost like a big watermelon. And so you cut it open, this is not the part you eat, this is the seeds, the seeds is the meat that you eat. I'm so glad they have it here, kudos to them. I, I like Bravo's again. So a lot of people don't know how to pick peaches. Would you believe that? Do you yeah. know how to pick peaches? No. Are you kidding me? I know, my husband does. Come on, Mackenzie. <laughs> All right, so real quick, peaches, you want to buy them when they're not that soft, uh, okay? <laughs> you don't want you don't want to touch it and it starts juice starts coming out. All right, it's a little bit sat too long, a little bit, okay? If you're gonna eat it right there and then, then take the chances, all right? But the chances are it might be spoiled right there in that spot, right? Peaches, you just want to, you know fill them out. You want they want to be soft but not too soft. If they hard, 
definitely not good. However, I do buy hard ones when I'm cooking my flambe peach foster. When I'm cooking the foster, because I'm cooking the peaches. If you're gonna grill the peaches, the hard peaches would be good for that because you're grilling them and over due time, it'll get soft. But just to eat it right then, you want it soft. Let's talk about pears. A lot of people don't know how to pick pears. And here they have two different pears. Um, let's talk about storing pears. Well, we can talk about storing herbs too. A lot of people don't know how to store their herbs in the refrigerator. Or fruits, strawberries, people don't know. You have to rinse them off, put them in an airtight container, um, dry them off, berries, all type of berries, rinse them off, dry them off, and put them in an airtight container. That's the right way. You don't leave it in the container that the strawberries come in. But we're gonna talk about pears. And you don't leave it in the container that the berries come in, okay? I just wanna put that out there. All right, so this pear is a little bit hard, right? But we know pears, are not supposed to be as soft as peaches. That's why I started off the peach. How do you know how to pick a pear? Simply said, now this one I'm not gonna pick. Why is that? Because of the, like, the... There's a little bit mold on it. It's a little bit mold on it. So ultimately when we're picking out pears, we wanna press down on the stem. That one's not ready yet. If it's soft on the stem, that means it's very ripe. It's ready to eat. We're not buying that one. We're not buying that. We don't want it bruised. But see how it pressed down in the middle, just a little bit? See how it's so soft? Yes. That's the softness you're looking for in a pear. No bruising, softness. It's so soft right there. That means it's ready to eat, it's sweet, and it's juicy. Okay, let's talk about uh, parsley, right? You get your parsley, you put it in your plastic, you go home, you put it in your bottom drawer, and you leave it there. It's no, really you want crazy. longevity with your herbs, right? You're not gonna use all this in one setting. This is curly pasta. You're not gonna use all this unless you're making a soup or something, right? What you wanna do is you wanna rinse them off. You wanna wrap this up in moist paper towel, moist paper towel, and put it in your drawer. Now, it takes maintenance because a day or two, that paper towel is gonna be dry, but you gotta keep it moist. That is why they keep them moist here. There's a water machine that sprays their herbs to keep them moist. They're still breathing. They're still living. You understand what I'm saying? Take scallions, for example. Look at this. They still have roots. What does that mean? They're still growing. They're still alive, right? So you take them scallions, you put them in a mason jar with some water, just enough where it only touches the root. You don't want the water up here because then it starts to wilt, right? You put them in a jar, you put some water in there, put it in the refrigerator with a bag over it, a Ziploc bag, put it in a bag, and you put them in the refrigerator, you see how long they live. You didn't know that, huh? Yeah. Come on now, that. that's what we're here for. <laughs> Come on, what else, what else, what else? I mean, I could talk all day. Listen, I love shopping, I love teaching people. You see this bag? You don't keep them in this bag. They're gonna go bad. You see that, that fog? that moisture that's on the bag right there, that moisture is gonna make the garlic get wet and then the water makes it wilt faster. You ever seen that? Yes. You don't keep garlic in the refrigerator. When it's, when it's fresh garlic, the bulbs, that's what you call them, the bulbs that's over there, the bulbs you don't put in the refrigerator. You put them in a nice dry area on the counter or the table and they last longer. I'll say this, if you're getting stuff from the farmer's market, a real farmer's market, a lot of that stuff you don't put in the refrigerator because it's straight from the farm. Once you put it in the refrigerator, now you have to keep it in the refrigerator. I said that to say, like if you're getting tomatoes, um, if you're buying eggs from a real market, you don't have to put it in the fridge. It stays good outside. That's how you know when you're getting your food from if it's really authentically from a farm. So a lot of grocery stores don't have this service anymore. Um, but like I said, I'm from New York. I'm very familiar with Bravo's and some other grocery stores similar to Bravo's. And when I came to Florida, I was like, oh my gosh, Bravo, yes! I'm familiar with it. They sell like, you know, multicultural things. And this is one of the departments that I really love, which is the butcher shop. You need a whole chicken, they cutting it up. It's like they almost got the chickens in the back. I mean, wait, wait, hold on. You can hear them. You can hear the chickens. So they cut the chickens here and they, and they hey, hip hop, you know, I can't speak Spanish. So, you know, uh, you want the oxtails. You don't want to buy the pack that's already frozen. You want your oxtails cut how you want it. Come right here. All the proteins, you want them cut, you want some steaks, you want some tomahawks, 
come right here. Yes. I do have a question. Sure, sure. Um, so when you do use the service, so where do you get the, the food? Do, like, come do right here. I come here to get chicken for like stew chicken. So if I'm doing stuff for the homeless, I'm coming here to get the chicken because I need the chickens how I want them, you know? Um, if I'm looking um, my filet mignons, I will come here. If I want them a particular size, I want them five ounces, I want them six ounces, I'm coming here, I say, hey, Bobby, I need blah, 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 blah. And that's what I really shop here for. I love buying my meat too. Some exotic foods like a uh, grill, you'll buy your pork from here. You want your red snapper, you, you're you gonna find it here. You know, certain meats that people cook in different cultures, you know, yes. you come here and get them. They have it over mm -hmm. here. So I wanna know like how to pick the meat and then how to look out like for, for the best meat, like for um, to cook for clients. All right, so one thing that people don't, um, people don't know about meats is, they'll look at a piece of meat and they'll be like, oh, it's too bloody, mm -mm. I'm not getting that. Or a lot of people will say, oh, this one is too um, dark. This one's too dark, I'm not getting that one, that's not fresh. Okay, let's, let's, let's call it all the bowl, okay? All right, listen, there's no such thing as fresh, okay? They don't have no cows in the back. How fresh do you want it? I mean, come on, like, I mean, come on, I mean. Come on now, dog. Come on, man. There's no such thing as fresh seafood. They didn't just pick it out of the water, okay? They're not next to a dock and, hey, well, here's your lobster. No, there's no such thing as fresh. Okay, so let's talk about the blood. That's not blood. What it is. That's myoglobin. Mm -hmm. What does blood do when it comes out of your body and sits for over 24 hours? It coagulates. It coagulates. And then what happens after another 24 hours? It turns uh, color. Okay, besides the color, it starts disappearing. Sure. It starts dehydrating. If this is blood, how is this blood sitting here for how many days? Okay, so let's talk about what we discussed. The darkness. Do you know what aged steak is? Aged steak is when it's sitting a long period of time. It develops mold, mildew. It does. You, let's say you want to age a tomahawk. Get some butter, wrap it up in butter. Don't wrap it up. Put it in the refrigerator, leave it there for over 30 days. You have aged steak. Aged steak is old steak. It's not fresh. Then what happens is the intensity of the mold creates this flavor in the meat. So what you do is you're not cooking the mildew. Let's, let's make that disclaimer. You're taking off the milk, you carve it off, and then you go do it again and age it more. This steak is aged, that's all it is. Depend, I didn't even read what type of steak it is. Also depends where the meat is coming from, what part of the cow or what part of the, uh, the animal is coming from. That's what creates that color, how much oxygen is in that meat that was in the meat when it was alive. So if there's a lot of oxygen, it's more red. If it's decreasing the oxygen, it's dark red. It's like this, it looks old. So aged meat ain't nothing wrong with it, right? Let's talk about marbleization. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm in the airport, just got back from New York City. But listen, I wanted to do this video because listen, I love educating. I love teaching you about the do's and don'ts about food. But the video got a little bit, just a little bit too long. So I told the editor, let's just do two videos. Let's just, you know, save them time and they can just stay tuned to the next video. So listen, I need you to hit the notification bell down below. Uh-huh, right there. Uh -huh. Hit the notification bell so you know when the next video hit. Listen, stay cool, stay bougie, and I'll see you in the next video. Yes, we out of here. Yeah!